The OpenSSL project is a collaborative effort to develop a robust commercial grade, full feature, and open source toolkit implementing the Secure Sockets layer SSL v2 and v3 and transport layer security TLS v1 protocols as well as a full strength general purpose cryptographic library. As an open source multi platform, the OpenSSL toolkit has encountered some serious security breaches no. along its way to robust safety and reliability protocols. Seven main vulnerabilities have been documented and addressed by the IT community during the time that the OpenSSL has been around, and these vulnerabilities represent the core of the present research document. With this purpose, we will discuss each vulnerability in particular, the impact of the vulnerability on the OpenSSL, and we will wrap things up with the explanation of counterattack implementations conducted by developers. Hi, my name is Davian Canty. It is believed that timing attacks cannot be used to attack general purpose servers, such as web servers, since decryption times are masked by many concurrent processes running on the system. Many crypto libraries completely ignore the timing attack and have no defenses implemented to prevent it. The basic idea is to make an initial guess and refine it by learning bits one at a time, from the most significant to the least. RSA timing attack affect open SSL version 0.9.6a and 0.9.7. RSA applications using a hardware crypto accelerator are not vulnerable. The RSA blinding operation is the most widely accepted defense against these timing attacks. Because the decryption is random, the timing decryption does not reveal information about the key. CVE 2012-2110 is a buffer overflow flaw in OpenSSL's bio and file based functions. These functions in OpenSSL do not properly interpret integer data. This allows attackers to conduct buffer overflow and denial of service attacks. Any application that uses bio or file based functions to read untrusted DER format data is vulnerable. The open SSL command line utility is also affected if used to process untrusted data in the DER format. Affected users should upgrade to the latest version of open SSL. There are no workarounds. Hi, I'm Daniel Oyos. ASM.1 library has several parsing errors on OpenSSL toolkit. For example, some that allow malformed certificate encryption to be parsed incorrectly. This vulnerability may be remotely exploited and cause a denial of service. ASM.1 stands for Abstract Syntax Notation, number one, and it is an international standard describe and transmit data packets between applications and networks. The parser is a critical step in either front-end processing. The input to a parser is usually text in some computer language. Uh, parsers can be anything from simple functions to complex programs such as the front-end of a C++ compiler or the HTML parser of a web browser. The OpenSSL team released the patch in version 0.9.6 EM later to eliminate these vulnerabilities. The most current version is OpenSSL 1.01H, which includes all the bug and security features. The vulnerability in the handling of CDC cipher suites and SSL CLN and ECLN applications, which could lead to plain text recovery by exploiting the timing differences that arise during max processing. Cool. Cool.
Cypher suites are a collection of cryptographic primitives and the choice of a cipher. They are maintained by the internet and assigned names and numbers of doors. Go, 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 go. CBC stands for Cypher Blockchain, as you can see in the diagram below. An initialization vector is added to the plain text, and the block cipher encryption is converted into the cipher text, and it's decrypted with the black block cipher decryption, and the initialization vector then is converted back into plain text. An update to Netcool Portal Apache component will be made available as a patch to bring the Apache and all the related components up to date with the security issues. Cool. Hello everyone, my name is Robert Lewis, and I will be covering the OCSP statement one, as well as the predictable keys one. When attempting to access a website, Hidden messages, your browser decides whether it's safe for you to connect. It does this by checking if the site has a certificate and whether that certificate is valid. Mm -hmm. Online Certificate Status Protocol, or OCSP for short, is one method used for checking a website certificate. Cool. A website owner is granted a certificate from an authorized state. Okay, I didn't know I was there. An investigation on the website owner to ensure that the business is legitimate. Why you be like so your that? browser like... periodically asks the CA for a signed assertion of the status of the certificate at the beginning of a new HTTPS connection. Depending on the outcome, the connection is either granted or terminated. The figure to the right shows the message sequence in the handshake protocol. As we can see, the client you initiates a session by first sending a client hello message to the server. Witty hackers have learned that they could incorrectly format the client hello handshake message and parse the end of the message, triggering an invalid memory access causing a web server to crash. As well, there is a potential for information to leak if OCSP nonce extensions are used. Users of OpenSSL are strongly advised to upgrade to OpenSSL 1.0.0D or 0.9.8R where a fix was prepared. What if a program that was responsible for generating random keys that are used to protect access to sensitive information was not generating as many random values as they thought they should? Wouldn't this make it easier for an attacker to determine the key? To name a few, that means an attacker would have the ability to read encrypted traffic, log into remote servers, or to forge messages and make them appear authentic. In May 2008, Debian project announced that the Persuado random number generator in Debian's version of OpenSSL was broken and insecure. Because of this weakness, keys are more common than they should be. This makes it easier for an attacker to guess keys through a brute force guessing attack, giving little knowledge of the system. Debian users using OpenSSL are strongly urged to recreate all keys generated by OpenSSL from scratch and update their version of OpenSSL to the appropriate version depending on the distribution used. This information is listed on the slide as well. Hello everyone, my name is Harblin, or little bit in particular, OpenSSL versions 1.01 through 1.01f had a severe memory handling bug in their implementations of the TLS Harblin extension that could be used to reveal up to 64 kilobytes of the application's memory with every Harblin. By recording the memory of the web server, attackers could access sensitive data, including the server's private key. This could allow attackers to decode earlier eavesdrop communications. If the encryption protocol used does not ensure perfect forward sequence. Knowledge of the private key could also allow an attacker to mount a man-in-the-middle attack against any future communications. The 
the vulnerability might also reveal the encrypted part of all the user sensitive requests and responses, including session cookies and passwords, which might allow attackers to hijack the identity of another user of the service. Impact on OpenSSL. At its disclosure, some 70% or half a million of the Internet secure web servers certified by trusted authorities were believed to have been vulnerable to the attack. However, hard bleed can affect both the server and client. The Canada Revenue Agency reported the theft of social insurance numbers belonging to 900 taxpayers and stated that they were accessed through an exploit of the bomb during a six-hour period on April 8, 2014. As a result of hard bleed, Yahoo reportedly leaked user information for most of the day. Any servers running OpenSSL on Apache were also affected, implicating a multitude of common websites and services. Counter-attack implementations. Google developers prepared a fix for hard bleed. The resulting patch, which was added to Red Hat's issue tracker, is dated March 21st, 2014. The next chronological date available from the public evidence is the claim by Cloudflare that they fixed the flaw of their systems on March 31st, 2014. Stephen Hansen applied the fix to OpenSSL's version control system on April 7th, 2014. The first fixed version, 1.0.1G, was released on the same Conclusion. The best conclusion we can provide is that no matter how much developers strengthen their platforms and applications, there will always be a threat associated with a vulnerability that attackers will try to exploit. And it's very likely that the next attack will be more sophisticated than the former one. Therefore, our advice is for the readers to take as much as they can out of the knowledge that we transmitted in this research and make of it the starting point to not only try to implement secure hardware and software systems, but creating security when developing them.